Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace with Chris Shea, author, speaker, and founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. For more information, please visit the website www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Enjoy the show. All right, wonderful. Thank you all for being with us. And today, where I am, happens to be the first full day of winter. So happy winter to all of you who are in the same situation. That's the topic for today. As I reflect on the beginning of winter, my mind is drawn to the winter solstice and to one of my favorite American authors, Henry David Thoreau. And here's a quote from Thoreau. In winter, we lead a more inward life. Our hearts are warm and cheery, like cottages under drifts, whose windows and doors are half concealed, but from whose chimneys the smoke cheerfully ascends. I know not many people enjoy this time of the year. I believe I'm one of the rare ones who actually looks forward to the beginning of winter. In reality, autumn is my most favorite time of the year. But winter is a very close second, if not tied with first. There's a lot of reasons why I enjoy winter. One of them goes back to this quote from Thoreau. And he begins in that quote that I just read, in winter we lead a more inward life. Now for an introvert like me, leading a more inward life is very appealing. The sense that now in this season, as the days shorten, and the nights lengthen. There's more time that we can spend indoors, more time we can spend closed in, in a positive way, more closeness with family, more time to spend thinking about where our year has been, where our lives are going, What do I need to do different? What do I keep doing the same? So I think when we look at all of this, when we deal with winter, to me, there's a lot of positives involved in it. I think part of this also, my love of winter, that is, is that I grew up in the northern parts of the United States, in an area where winter definitely overtook summer, where a couple feet of snow as the first snowfall was not unheard of, and where the sun would set around 3.30, 4 o'clock, and still be dark when I would go to school the next morning. Not at all depressing for me. Again, I think it's because I grew up with it, I'm used to it, but there's a comfort that comes with that. For when we think about the nighttime and we think about retiring to our beds and we think about cozying up in wonderful afghans and blankets and flannel sheets and nowadays electric blankets, we can think of warm fireplaces Think of snuggling up with those with whom we love. See, for me, winter is not necessarily this negative period. But as I also reflect on winter, and on today specifically, I do understand that today is the winter solstice. And when we look historically at the winter solstice, 
We come to understand that many of our ancestors, the people who have come before us, they didn't really understand the science behind the tilt of the earth, the rotation of the earth, the actual reason for the seasons, the reason for the changes of the uh, times and what the sun was doing. A reflection that I have had, and I've I've written about uh, this in, in a previous blog, maybe a year or so ago, but I'm reminded of it now. Did you ever stop to think, what did our ancestors feel and think on that first day? That day when our ancestors realized that they were alive, that they were know, some sort of self-knowledge, and that they realized that around them was this brightness and that they can see something around them, the trees, their environment, other people, whatever that may be. But then what happened, though, coming that afternoon into that evening when that sun began to set? See, we understand it now as the tilt of the earth, and as the earth tilts, the sun appears to drop below the horizon, even though it's the earth, you know, uh, tilting. But they didn't know that. And I, I have wondered what was going through their minds on that first evening when all of a sudden this bright object in the sky that was lighting their world began to slip away. And as that slipped away, what's going through their minds? And it finally disappears. You know, I tend to wonder, what were they thinking as now they're plunged into darkness? Most of us don't realize that anymore because we know that when the sun sets, the earth will continue to spin. And as it continues to spin a few hours later, the sun is going to appear uh, to come back on the horizon. But again, our ancestors were clueless to that, especially on that first evening. And so I just reflect what's going through their mind as they're in this darkness. And then what goes through their mind when that first person happens to glimpse as they look over to the east, a bit of light down at the horizon. And that light gets larger and brighter and larger and brighter. And then all of a sudden they're back in the day. Now, why am I reflecting on all this? Well, partly because that's what I do for fun. But more realistically, because on this day of the winter solstice, many traditions have it as this is our shortest day, which means our longest night, where our ancestors would build large bonfires, would bring many candles, would just try to lighten that night Because it was that hope that the day comes back. Well, as we reflect on our own lives, how often do we feel that that setting sun will not return? That our happiness and our peace will never return? That maybe we in our own lives We'll have to live in our own darkness forever. For if we notice our own personal internal fear is not unlike that external fear of our ancestors. As was true with them is also true for us. We know intellectually that the sun will again rise. And our ancestors who built the bonfires and lit all those candles, they knew that the sun was going to rise again. 
But when we focus into our own lives, how often do we forget that the sun will truly, once again, rise? Our ancestors most assuredly assumed that they had enticed the sun to return through their rituals. Although, as we know, that was just nature doing what nature does. How about in our own lives? How can we learn from our ancestors? Who didn't wait for the eternal darkness. Rather, they took action. And they did what they could do to tackle their fear. They tried to stop or to reverse what they felt was inevitable. And for me, that's something that we, for our own lives, can take from this. That when our ancestors were caught in this fear that that light would not return, instead of just living in that fear, they took action. They tried rituals, they lit fires, they did what they felt they had to do to bring that light back. What stops us from doing all that we have to do to bring back our own inner light? Why do we sit back and suffer within our own darknesses? We need to learn from our ancestors who sat in the woods and on the plains and in the deserts. Wherever they were, when that sun went down, they had to fight that fear. Find a hope, find a way, whatever it may have been, to bring that back. And to their surprise, it did come back. So, of course, they all sat back in joy and praise and figured, look what we did. We took action and caused that light to return. So what about ourselves? Can we take that action in our own lives so that that light can return? Not that we sit in the darkness any longer. A couple steps that I have thought of, somewhat simple, but uh, let me just mention I have uh, five steps that we can try so that when we're stuck in the darkness, we can take action and find again that light. So the first step, when we feel an emotional fear, we need to take some time to meditate some time and quiet to reflect on our inner selves, to try to find where is that source of our fear. Number two, we need to identify what that fear is. Name it for what it is. Honestly think through what you feel is the worst possible outcome of this situation. For you see, when we actually think through that worst possible outcome in our next thinking, we can also realize that that worst possible outcome may not be that bad. Or that worst possible outcome that we feel may happen is actually something that cannot or will not happen. So that in step three, we can think on this fear. Have we ever felt this fear before? Before when we had this fear, what was the outcome? What actions did we do back then that alleviated the fear? So what actions can we take this time for a similar result? And if we've never had this experience before, we can hopefully draw upon the experiences of others or draw upon some strength that we have found through different experiences which can also come back to help us, which leads me to number four, learning from our personal history. So that what we can see is that in our personal histories, what have we done? What have we learned? What skills have we developed? What people have we gathered around us? 
who can assist in this. Not unlike our ancestors who decided they needed to take action, and I'm sure it wasn't just one person who decided to build that fire or one person who decided to try something, but they took the skills of the people they had around them and tried to figure out amongst all of us, what can we think to do? And together, let's do this and accomplish this. Which brings me to number five. Never give up on hope. I know that that's easier said than done. But if we sit back and do nothing, then we will feel hopeless. If we can stand up and take some action, however small we think that action may be, what we will find is that there is hope. Because in taking action, even something small is going to make even a small change. And that small change can be multiplied. So as we reflect on the beginning of this season, I hope that all of you can find a shift in your perspective. Maybe if you have dreaded this season, maybe you can find a way to look at some of the beauty of the season. Maybe this season can bring you back in touch with family, with friends and loved ones. So as I close it, it's hope for the best winter season that you can possibly have. I appreciate your listening. And if you'd like to find more of my writings and podcasts and my life coaching services, you can go to my website at lifesjourneyblog.com. Have a mindful day.